Now, what about uh, wasps, paper wasps? Um, I use soap. I actually brought a bar of soap today. That's my uh, solution for that. Soap? Yeah, and I'll just oh. do it on this box to demonstrate. So, so along, along uh, the Minas Trail that I have, uh, I got a lot of problems with wasps. Yeah, so the wasps like to attach themselves to the insides of the box. Uh huh. And so in general, and you can see this actually has, has some, what's kind of a wasp protector in it. See in the corner there, up in the top corner, there's an extra piece of wood. Oh, yeah. Turns out that wood was added for the hook to keep the hook in place, but it turns out that actually acts as a wood mm. wasp protector because their favorite place is in this back corner right here along this seam here because uh -huh. they like to go attach their little nest in a corner. So having a little extra piece of wood in there actually helps because they don't, for some reason, they don't want to be in the center. They want to be against the side. Yeah. And so, they corner, yeah, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll actually soap the box. When it, in this case, we haven't any wasp in this one, but I'll just demonstrate. And I'll just put soap everywhere in all the little niches. And then that makes it very difficult for them to attach their box, their, mm. their nest, when they can't nest in here. So the soap is a little, is a nice little, and I like to use ivory because it's the, the uh, yeah, very, very, yeah, very, very simple. 99% pure. Exactly. <laughs> and so I just kind of do that for the box, and that'll help reduce any wasp. And sometimes the, the, the wasps are so active and they're making so much noise, I won't even open the box because I don't want to get stomped. Oh, no way. They are so aggressive. Yeah. So you just leave it? And... Yeah. But in general, a lot of times, in, if it's early in the morning or late in the afternoon and it's cold because it's their cold-blooded creatures, they, they can't move. And you can easily evict them, you know, because they're just like, they can't even really fly. And they just fall on the ground, mm. you know, and I don't like doing that to them because we need pollinators. Yeah. The pollinators and the birds are linked. So a lot of times, if, if I don't, what I'll do is I'll just if it's a box that just they just keep using it, I'll just leave that at the wasp box yeah. and put up another box for the birds nearby. Same thing for the you know for the woodpeckers, and that's what's wonderful about we're lucky in our county. We have a barn where we can store boxes, and that bar, box that barn is almost always full with nest boxes, you know. And so I don't have to worry about number of boxes, which is not oh, the case good. for every county. Not every county has a barn, you know, so we're really lucky. And we've actually helped many counties start a program by giving them boxes from our barn. <laughs> right. You ever have so. problems with bugs, blowflies, stuff like that? We have had one incident of blowflies, and the blowfly um, larvae will kill the baby bluebirds if they get attached to them sometimes. And I've had, uh, but only once in several years, had to actually pick the little larvae off. Because usually what happens is you get there too late and they're already dead. To yeah. be honest, once it gets an infestation, but in general, we've had a very, like one infestation that I know of on this. And what about mites? Mites, I haven't had, um, don't have much experience with. I know there, there is a mite that's bothering our, um, the honeybees. The non-native honeybees have been successful to, to a mite that's really hurt our pollinators, but I haven't heard of problems with mites and bluebirds in our box, not in this area. Our friends had a wreath on their front door and some sparrows or house finches nested on it and they said when they took it down it was just covered in mites. That's the blowflies. Those, they look like mites. They're not, oh, that's blowfly. Oh, that's, that's blowfly. Okay. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it freaked them out. Yeah, and it, they do look like mites because they're whitish looking. They don't really look okay. like a fly at this point. They're okay. the larvae stage. That's what it was. Um, I, you know, I'm sensitive to pollinators. We yeah. need pollinators. The birds need the pollinators, you know, because th it's, it's all interlinked. So I tend to be a little bit more gentle, probably, than some people. But that's the beauty of it. Get, everyone gets to do it the way that, that they feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, that's the beauty of this program. Everybody gets yeah. to monitor their boxes how they see fit. So I tell people, you know, here's what I do, but, you know, do what you. Do what you think's right, and it makes make, make, most important. Don't put yourself in jeopardy, right? It's not worth getting stung, you know. And if and it, but if it's like the only box you've gotten that's in your backyard, then that's a different story than if you've got a trail and you've got several boxes, right? So it really depends on on what your situation is. And I tell people if you're gonna, if, if, it's, if you're worried about getting stung, what you do is you cover yourself. You cover your face. To cover your, you don't have any skin exposed when you go to evict them if it's if they're active, and then you then you minimize your chance of getting, and in general the eggs the queen, 
you know, doing what something to really harm them. That's if you want to get rid of them, that's the way you do it. You get rid of their queen, or you get rid of their eggs, or whatever. However they reproduce, that's the way you stop them. Because then they'll go, oh man, we can't reproduce here, and they'll go someplace else. So 